You're listening to Wet Shaving Talk, powered by Sharpologist.com, where we're dedicated to preserving the art and skill of classic shaving. I'm your host, Joe Borelli, and today is August 5th, 2024. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I got. I hope you guys had a great uh, few weeks so in between shows here. I sure have had a very, uh, very eventful couple of weeks. Uh, I've been, I guess, if you could say, eventful. I've been um, messing around with some new wet shaving stuff, revisiting some old wet shaving stuff, which you know usually. I, I love to do that. I love to go sometimes just to go in the cabinet and find something you haven't used in some time. And trying it out again, but you know, honestly, sometimes I feel kind of guilty having a razor or a couple of razors that I don't use very often. You know, I tend to use um, going like, I guess you could say, like a, a stage or um, kind of like a phase of wet shaving, and I try to do it in like monthly, monthly like a uh, time. I guess you could say. I guess time constraints. I don't know. I try to keep it to a month. I, I don't really know what the word is. I'm trying to figure it out. But I like to go through at least try to use some of the stuff for like a couple of weeks to a month because it makes. I guess it makes me feel better about owning it and it and gives the the part of my collection a, a you know an actual chance to be part of it. I, I do use you know, primarily straight razors again. Now, if you've been listening to the show, I've gone through phases to where I've used just safety razors for like a couple of years and then or, and then then throw the straight razors back in. Now I'm back in the phase of using straight razors primarily every day using a safety razor, um, pro, you know, here and there, periodically. And, well, it's kind of like looking at my collection. I have a lot of safety razors. I have a lot of straight razors. And I'm like using, I'm only using a couple of them. So I feel guilty. So I'm trying to get that back into the game again. Like, hey, to get more of a... Um, of a kind of like I guess a routine or or more of a you know to put it more into to uh, into use. So I want to use my stuff more often, and been trying to do that in like two or three to a month interval. So uh, today on the show we're going to talk about using a bore brush. I've been using a bore brush for the last few weeks. Something I have not touched in I could tell you probably two to three years. And I'll tell you my thoughts. Really was happy to to bring that back out. And to try a bore brush again, and I forgot how really how good they are. You know how much fun they are. They can be, and and also they're also really cheap compared to everything else. They're very affordable brushes, and you can get a really good quality one for like around twenty bucks. So, been using that, been messing around with that, uh, trying some different lathering techniques. I've been using it with creams and with soaps. So I'll tell you a little bit about my experience there. Uh, some we also have on the show today some kind of just getting into the show notes. Sorry guys, kind of going on on and on. Uh, but new double edge blades from Razor Emporium. They just came out or were announced last week, so really excited to see that uh, Razor Emporium Rex Rex Supply Company. They have been making razors and repairing razors for over ten years now. So good to see that they brought their own blade in. Ollie Works hand built razors. This is based on the Gibbs design, another razor like that, uh, but with a little bit of a, of a surprise in the in between. So I'll tell you a little bit about this company as well. This has been fairly around only about a year. Uh, and we also have Wolf, Wolf Blades straight razors. These blades are actually um, custom designed straight razors that have been out for about a year or two, maybe two years. Uh, based out of South Africa, so I could tell. I'll tell you a little bit more about that company. What I've found out about them, and just remember, guys, the fall season is coming up. That's right. You know what that means? Tons and tons of seasonal products. So looking forward to that as well. With fall just around the corner, and without further ado, let's get on with the show. So using a bore brush, uh, I've been. I've personally been using a bore brush for the last few weeks. And it's been so long since I used a bore brush to the point where I feel bad about it. So I, I recently picked up my old Omega. I had an Omega bore brush, one of those bigger ones that you can get. I think I paid 15 bucks for it. Very reasonable. 
and it was broken in some years ago. But I, I look, you know, I kind of put them on the shelf. I have a shelf in my um, my closet that have all my brushes on it. And I tend to always go for a badger brush, or usually, you know, my better ones because I'm like, ah, oh, if you know, if I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it nice. Do do it, you know, with style, or do it with the better my my favorite stuff, right? You know, there's of course your as you know your mileage may vary. I know some some of you guys hate hearing that, but it's true that uh, on different brushes, some people go only by bore brushes. I know guys that only use bore brushes. I know guys that also just use badger. I know people that don't touch either, and they use synthetic. Oh, and there's some horsehair brushes out there too that work great. I have a horsehair brush that works very good. But I looked at it and I said, you know what? I have it. I haven't used it. I'm the type of person that says, hey, if you use it, use it or lose it type person, all right? If it's not moved, it should be it should be moved out, right? So I said, you know, let me try and see if I like it. If not, maybe I'll just give it away or, um, you know, hold on to it for somebody that needs it or make a raffle or something like that. So I used it and I actually had a lot of fun. And I'll tell you why. Bore brushes, if you haven't used the bore brush, and you're you're okay with using that kind of that kind of like uh, hair, you know, using actual natural brushes. I highly recommend at least trying to buy buy one and give it a shot. You can get some of them for around ten dollars. I know Omega makes a smaller one for about ten bucks. This one was about fifteen. That's in the show notes. The picture that I have the, with the chrome handle. And try it. I mean, they're really stretchy. They make a. They're very very. Um, they have a lot of backbone, so they're very dense, right? They're very hard hair. And they they actually give you a really nice lather and lather quickly because of their stretchiness and their firmness, right? From their backbone, what they call the that's what they call the bushes backbone. It's got a lot of backbone. It's very strong. It doesn't really fall apart with hair, and that's why it works very well and why it's been used for many many years. And just scratching it and getting a really quick lather, it was very you know if you haven't used a bore brush and use badger or synthetic primarily. You'll notice that it's a different technique with lathering. You have to use kind of a little bit of a lighter lather. You don't want to dig it in too much. You shouldn't really dig it in too much with a with a bat with a badger brush either. But going in there, it's very very dense, and it comes out and the, and the lather comes out very um, even. And also, I tend to use a little bit more water when I use a uh, bore brush, just because of the denseness, because it's, it's such a hard hair, it's such a, a firm substance. And it works great. So I'm going to continue to use the bore brush for probably for another couple of weeks. I have a few of them. I have, I think, two or three. One I have is a custom knot that I got from the Golden Nib about five years ago, six years ago, that I put in my my Rubber Set 400. So I have a, a Rubber Set 400. I also have a Rubber Set 400 clone that was made by Phoenix Artists and Accruchments. And I have some of the ferrules or the blanks that I have... Um, because that's my honestly, that's my favorite design brush. I have a badger, I have a bore, and I have a synthetic. Uh, three knots for this particular brush. You know, you can take the the ferrules or the blanks off, and you can the screws right on. And I put like a little O ring in the middle of it as well. And I use them. I use, I love that brush. I use it quite often. I especially like the the Phoenix brush because it's solid. It's solid metal instead of being hollow like the rubber set. But I use both. And I have. Uh, I'm going to use the the bore ha- the bore ha- uh, knot I have for that brush as well. So I'm going to use that this week. But the Omega brush, it's great investment. You can get a really the big one. You can get for like sixteen to twenty dollars, and you can get the smaller ones for like ten to twelve. So brand new. So I think it's worth it. I think they're very fun. I think they're also fun to collect. So I'm going to definitely continue using the bore brush, and I won't forget about them in the future. So uh, Rex Supply, are also the same company with Razor Emporium, they developed a DE or double-edged blade for their double-edged razors and for, well, really for any razor out there. So if you guys are familiar or not familiar, Razor Emporium is a company that was basically built by uh, Matt who he started repairing, well, started collecting vintage Gillette razors and then began uh, repairing them at home and then eventually creating a business where now he is a restorer of vintage Gillette razors and anything really vintage. Uh, That razor company has turned into a Rex Emporium where they make straight razors, they make the the safety razors, and they make um, a bunch of stuff, accessories. Uh, This company also makes parts. 
for vintage uh, Gillette razors. Like they'll make some handles and stuff like that if you need it. And you can also buy uh, and they make the spring, like the spring for the adjustable. So really they know their stuff when it comes to safety razors and, and straight razors as well. So they've finally, uh, they've developed a double-edged blade that's specifically for their razors, but it can be used for anybody. And they're offering them a 225 for five to start. But you can also buy them in, in increments of, of five to 100. You can get a box of 100 of them, which a lot of us like to do. We like to have 100 blade boxes because they look nice and you don't have to buy them again for a while. Uh, made of Swedish steel and coated in Teflon. These razors, are, these blades are imported from the Czech Republic and are getting... I guess I haven't gotten many reviews yet because they just came out. There are a few on there, and they're saying that they're really good. I have no doubt in my mind that the team over at Razor Emporium would not come out with a good product, so I can definitely say these are probably worth trying. So if you get a chance, if you need some blades and you're, and you're getting your vintage uh, razor fixed, uh, throw in a set of these blades too and give them a shot. I'm sure they're going to be really good. And it's also good to see... That we're getting some new producers of blades. It's been a lot that we've seen in the last couple of years, especially the last two or three years. We've seen more and more companies coming out with their own blade. I'm sure they may they're made by a big company, right? They're made by a big manufacturer, but still, it's good to see another option out there. Seeing that we lost most of the Russian blades and on the last few years due to the um, the stuff going on over there, so we have some new ones coming up. I think it's definitely worth a shot. And I, I, one thing is, uh, I'm, I think there's tryablade.com is gone. That that was a great company. I used to buy blades from that place all the time. Uh, but there is a, a couple others that do blade packs, some some vendors that will do like samplers and stuff. So you can try different ones. So that's also a fun way to try the blades. So Razor Emporium, good luck with your DE blades as with everything you do. And thank you for, for uh, bringing these into the wet shaving world. Oliworks Safety Razor. This is a company that I found recently on Instagram and I was looking at it and I said, okay, it's another Gibbs replica or Gibbs razor um, tribute or whatever. Until I started looking into the company and I said, wow, I think I made a mistake and I should have probably gave them more time in the past. So the uh, Oliworks is made by, is uh, produces a razor based on the old Gibbs adjustable design made for modern uh, audiences. So as you know, I just talked about Razor Emporium, the Rex. They also have a razor like this. They were the first ones to bring a stainless steel version. And now um, the Ollie Blade is also 100% made in the USA and family run uh, machining business. So a little bit on this company itself and this family. They started in 2009 uh, doing CNC machining on, on a large scale. So they own a huge machine shop or bigger from what us West Shavers would see would be a big machine shop. And they do machining for other things. So last year they started making uh, safety razors and they're pricing theirs at $150. It's made of 304 stainless steel available in a solid guard bar or a dual open comb design or a dual which comes with the solid guard bar and the um, open comb on one side. Uh, and pricing this razor is at $150 for an adjustable, for an American-made adjustable razor, $150. This is pretty substantial, and you can definitely tell because they own the machining already. They have really, they probably have already, they already have another business, so they can make this razor at a better price than some of the competition. But I haven't seen too much reviews on it. I haven't read about it. But I am thinking about picking one of these up because of the price, because of the the story behind it. And I think it's probably going to be pretty good. So, uh, based on again, based on that Gibbs design, that that really interesting adjustable. It's uh, you can take this razor apart, you can clean it, and it comes in a really cool package. And if you add twenty five bucks, you get a cool stand to go with it. So, uh, the Ollie Blades definitely exciting. Uh, if you take a look at their website, oliworks.com, is it? Yeah, oliworks.shop.com. Is you'll find this razor at all. Uh, you'll find this razor's direct link. They also offer it in a colored body. You can get uh, um, different colors, and you can also get the gear on the bottom, the adjustable, the gear that closes it up. You can get that as well in different colors, so you can get your little custom setup. If you want, or and it also comes with they also sell blades, but they don't sell much other than um, 
the razor itself and a couple and the and the stand. So that's really that's all available right now. I'm sure that they will have more coming out since that they own the machine machine shop. And if you go on their website right now, you'll be able to see they have lots of cool pictures and animations like of them lasering the numbers on it or just building the razor itself. So it looks really cool. Very excited to see this company come out. They've been around about a year now, just about a year. And they're offering a 10% off discount if you sign up for their newsletter. So check it out, guys. Ollieworks.com. If you're looking for a new razor, adjustable razor for a good price, it's going to probably be pretty good quality. If it's coming from the United States, it's definitely got to be. Uh, this might be the one for you. So uh, check them out. And finally, Wolf Blade Straight Razor. A lot of new products, guys, today on the show, and I'm really excited to see that. I've been doing a, just a very little research, and I've been finding a lot of stuff. But Wolf Blades is a custom straight razor company based out of South Africa that start around $500 USD for a custom razor and go all the way up to over $2,000. They use Damascus steel. They use carbon steel. They use different designs and different types of wood scales and also offer a custom option as well if you want to build your own. Uh, the primary sold online, but there's also a retail store in Ireland. I guess he, uh, the uh, Trevor, the owner and maker, partners with. So these razors are actually on display. Some of them are on display in a, in a retail store in Ireland, which you can find out more on their website if you check it out. Uh, with these, remember these with these custom pieces. You know, taking a look at it, there's gonna, they're going to vary. They're never one or two the same, but they all look great. And I think that they um, they're probably going to perform well too. Uh, Wolf Blades is based out of South Africa, so these you know if when you purchase these ra- this razor, uh, do remember wherever you are if you're in the United States, expect about two to three weeks to get it, and expensive shipping. Usually the most expensive ship expensive shipping comes from South Africa because it's so far away from us. So, but it, this razor might be worth the wait. I was taking a look at some of the designs. He uses folded Damascus steel. He uses a lot of different stuff, uh, etched blades. Oh man, it is just he the the possibilities are endless with this company uh, and really um very impressed with what they what uh, trevor the the guy who's behind it has come up with and it's just some of these razors are just stunning and it comes in a really cool box when you buy it they have a few accessories you can buy too some some accoutrements if you want to say like you have some soap some stuff like that so if you if you're going to do an order i would say probably go all out because it's not something that you'll be purchasing every day but uh remember guys with custom pieces razors i am a fan of custom razors i think they're awesome i just don't like to use them as much and i'll tell you why i think um so sometimes i think when you use a custom razor it's like using it's like uh for a motorcycle rider right i don't ride a motorcycle but i know people that do a chopper versus like a regular motorcycle a chopper being a custom one, you know, with those big handles, lower, all that stuff. A lot of people say they're hard to drive, right? They're hard to drive, but they look great. They're great in shows and they enjoy it. That's how I consider a custom straight razor like this with a great design versus a traditional straight razor. It's like a chopper. It's it's fun to own. It's fun to use, but it's not for everyday use because it's kind of a pain in the neck to try. Uh, some of these designs look like that. Some of them don't. So more of the regular traditional designs look a little bit easier to use. Now, remember also with Damascus steel, you got to be careful when you use it. You want to make sure you, you do not leave water on it because you can alter the design and you don't want to get any rust possible on it. Because once you do that, if you try to clean the rust, you're going to, you can kind of ruin the design as well. So, uh, so uh, this Excuse me, Wolf Blades, we salute you. Welcome to the wet shaving world. I know you've been around for a, a little bit, but but a lot of people have been talking about you and, and you look and your razors look great. So good luck in the future and looking forward to seeing some more of them coming out and some great designs as well. And in conclusion, guys, remember the fall season is just around the corner. It's August. Technically, you could start talking about it. Pumpkin Spice Day is only a couple weeks away, so once the, usually I, I'd like to think of, hey, after Pumpkin Spice Day, I can start using my fall stuff, right? I don't know why. It's just a tradition of mine. I like to use my uh, pumpkin flavor, my pumpkin scented soaps, whatever. My fall stuff starts coming out. I keep them all in a little box, 
I, I periodically use them throughout the year, but I like to save it for the season just because they make it special. So I'll be on the lookout from the vendors coming out with new stuff. Remember the fall seasonal special? We do that show in October, so that's coming up as well. It's right around the corner, and we're already on the second half of 2024, hard to believe. So again, right around the corner, guys. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. The most exciting part of the year for wet shaving is coming up. So looking forward to sharing some more stuff with you. If you are a vendor and you have some new stuff that you want to be featured or if you want to talk about it, just send me an email. That's all I need, and I'll get it out there. All right, guys, so that concludes the show for this week. Remember, our show is powered by Sharpologist.com, which your father didn't teach you about shaving. Special thanks to Mark Mantic 59 for everything that he does in the wet shaving community, and most of all, you guys, the listeners. Don't forget to check out my blog at ShaveStraightAndSafe.com, and always feel free to contact me at Joe.WetShavingNews at gmail.com. Again, guys, also, if you, if you haven't had a chance, check out my book on Amazon, The Modern Guide to Straight Razor Shaving, available in paperback and on Kindle. Our next show will be on the 19th of August. Until then, shave straight and shave safe. Bye-bye now.